Welcome back to Histories Unheard. In today's video, we're delving into the often overlooked but incredibly significant Roman Equian Wars. Join us as we uncover the dramatic clashes, strategic maneuvers, and the lasting impact of this ancient conflict. So buckle up, because we're about to journey back in time to explore one of history's lesser known but truly fascinating chapters. The Roman Equian Wars were a series of wars during the early expansion of ancient Rome in central Italy against their eastern neighbors, the Equi. According to Livy, the last king of Rome, Tarquinius Superbus, actually made peace with the Equi. They engaged in several battles against the Romans, including the Battle of Mount Algidus, 458 BC. It is said that the Romans managed to capture their main center around 484 BC and again about 90 years later. As we move into the second half of the 5th century BC, records of conflicts between Romans and Aequi become much scarcer. It is likely that the Aequi gradually became a more settled people and their raiding activities diminished as a result. The Aequi were not finally subdued until the end of the Second Samnite War, when it seems like they received a limited form of franchise. During the period of popular discontent in Rome, which led to the first Secessio Plebis in 494 BC, each of the Volsci, Sabines, and the Aequi took up arms at the same time. To meet the threat, a Roman dictator was appointed, Manius Valerius Maximus. Ten legions were raised, a greater number than had been raised previously at any one time, three of which were assigned to the consul Veturius to deal with the Aequi. The Aequi had invaded Latium, and Vitturius marched there to meet the enemy at the request of the Latin allies of Rome, rather than allowing the Latins to arm themselves. Upon the arrival of the Roman army, the Aequians retreated from Latium to the safety of the mountains to the... Shortly afterwards, the Romans bravely ventured into the mountains towards the Aequian camp. The Roman consul would have preferred to postpone any attack, as the Aequian army's camp was situated in a challenging location. However, the Roman troops insisted on proceeding without delay, eager to return to Rome as soon as possible due to the political events unfolding there. And so, with determination, the Roman army ascended the hill towards the Equian camp. The Equi, taken aback by the Romans' audacity, hastily abandoned their camp and fled. In this way, the Roman army triumphantly seized the Equian camp, acquiring a wealth of spoils and achieving a victory without shedding. In 488 BC, something interesting happened in Rome. The Volsci, led by Gaius Marcius Coriolanus and Adius Tullus Ophidius, decided to lay siege to the city. But guess what? Coriolanus, who was actually from Rome, had a change of heart and called off the siege. However, the Volsci didn't give up that easily. They returned to attack Rome, and this time they brought along an army of the Equi. But here's the twist. The Aequi didn't want to follow Alphidius as their leader. So, a dispute broke out between the two armies, and they ended up fighting each other. This weakened both sides and they were no longer a threat to Rome. But the story doesn't end there. In 485 BC, the Volsci and the Equi tried to attack Rome again, and guess what? They were defeated once more. This time, it was the consul Quintus Fabius Vibulanus who made the plebs angry by keeping the spoils of victory for himself. And just when you thought things couldn't get any more exciting, in 484 BC, the Volsci and Equi decided to give it another shot. But guess what? The Romans, led by the consul Lucius Aemilius Mamercus, defeated them once again. And to add some extra drama to the story, the Roman cavalry went on a rampage and slaughtered many of the enemy soldiers in the chaos that followed. The Equi decided to pick up their weapons once again in 482 BC. They laid siege to the Latin town of Ortona, and the Romans quickly responded by raising an army under the command of the consul Caso Fabius. In a remarkable turn of events, the Romans managed to defeat the Equi solely through a daring cavalry charge. However, there was some discontent among the Roman army, both towards the patricians and Fabius himself. As a result, the Roman infantry refused to pursue the fleeing enemy. Despite this setback, Fabius encouraged his troops to continue the pursuit, but they ultimately returned to camp. Nevertheless, Fabius and his army returned to Rome as victorious heroes. Fast forward to 479 BC, and Caso Fabius once again held the position of consul. The Aequi invaded the Latin territory, prompting Fabius to be assigned an army to address the threat. 
Interestingly, no major battle took place as the Aequai retreated to their fortified towns. However, when news arrived that the other consul, Titus Virginius Tricostus Rutilus, was in danger due to the Veientes, Fabius wasted no time in leading his army to rescue his colleague. In 475 BC, the Equi joined forces with the Volsi to invade the Latin territory. However, the Latins, with the support of the Hernici, but without any assistance from Roman troops or commanders, managed to repel the enemy and even capture a significant amount of booty. If you're enjoying the content so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Your support means a lot to us, and subscribing will ensure that you never miss out on our future upload. Thanks for being a part of our community. In 471 BC, guess what happened? The Equi decided to invade again, and this time the Volsi joined in on the fun too. But don't worry, the consul Titus Quinctius Capitolinus Barbatus was there to save the day. He led the Roman forces against the Equi and successfully wreaked havoc on their territory. Unlike his colleague Claudius, who managed to upset the plebeians and lost control of his troops, Quinctius had no such problems. In fact, his troops returned to Rome, singing his praises and calling him their parent. Fast forward to the next year, and we have the Roman consul Lucius Valerius Potidus leading the charge once again into Equian territory. Unfortunately, his attempt to assault the Equian army camp didn't go as planned, but he still managed to cause some chaos in their territory. Now let's jump ahead three years to 467 BC. This time, it was the Roman consul Quintus Fabius Vibulanus' turn to deal with the Aequi. The Aequi decided to play nice and asked for peace, which was agreed upon. But guess what? They couldn't keep their word and broke the peace shortly after by raiding into Latin territory. In 466 BC, the consul Quintus Servilius Priscus Structus led a Roman army into Equian territory to keep the war going. Unfortunately, an illness spread through the Roman camp, preventing any military engagement. Talk about bad luck. In 465 BC, something interesting happened in Rome. Quintus Fabius Vibulanus, who was serving as Roman consul for the second time, was given a special command against the Aequi. He really wanted to make peace with them, but unfortunately, the Aequi rejected his offer and decided to march to Algidum instead. The Romans were not happy about this at all, so they sent another consul, Titus Quinctius Capitolinus Barbatus, with another Roman army to deal with the Aequi. A big battle took place, and guess what? The Romans were victorious. As a result, the Aequi had no choice but to retreat to their own territory. But here's the thing. The Aequi didn't stay put for long. They quickly returned to Latium and started causing trouble by pillaging the countryside. This news reached Rome at a time when both consuls were away, and it caused quite a panic among the people. To calm everyone down, the consul Quinctius came back to the city. He declared something called the Justicium and appointed Quintus Servilius Priscus Structus as Praefectus Urbi while the consuls were away. Quinctius and his army then left Rome again in search of the enemy, but unfortunately, they couldn't find them to engage in battle. After four days, Quinctius returned to Rome and declared that the Justicium was over. Meanwhile, the other consul Fabius had a different story to tell. He successfully ambushed the Equi and completely defeated them, taking back all the loot they had stolen from the Latin territory. Fabius didn't stop there, though. He went on to ravage the Equi's lands in their own territory. Eventually, he returned to Rome with a lot of spoils and a great deal of glory. Hostilities continued in 464 BC. The Equi, in cahoots with the Volscian town of Acetra, already under Roman rule, decided to team up against Rome. The Hernici got wind of this alliance and kindly warned Rome that the Acetrans had revolted. The Romans also had a hunch that the Volscian town of Antium, which included a Roman colony, might also join the rebellion. This suspicion arose because Antium had been defeated by Rome in 468 BC, and many of the top opponents of Rome from Antium had fled to the Aquae. They had fought alongside the Aquae against Rome, and then returned to Antium. The Roman consuls Aulus Postumius Albus Regilensis and Spurius Furius Medellinus Fusus called upon the chief men of Antium to come to Rome and explain their position. Surprisingly, they attended without reluctance and answered sufficiently, so they were allowed to return to Antium. The Aequi invaded the Hernican territory 
and the Roman consul Furius marched against them. In the first battle, the Aequi emerged victorious, and the Roman forces found themselves besieged in their camp. The Hernici promptly informed Rome of the defeat, and the Senate declared an emergency decree, the Senatus Consultum Ultimum, the first recorded occasion of that decree. They urged the remaining consul Postumius to take all necessary measures to protect the state. Postumius stayed in Rome to recruit troops, and Titus Quinctius, the consul from the previous year, was given command of fresh Roman forces as proconsul. The Latin allies, the Hernici and Antium, were each asked to provide emergency troops. Equian forces were dispatched to invade Roman territory and, if possible, attack the city. The remaining consul Postumius was sent to confront this new threat, while Lucius Valerius, the consul of 470 BC, was left to defend Rome. A justitium was declared for several days. Meanwhile, the Roman forces, led by the consul Furius, burst forth from their besieged camp and bravely attacked the Aequi. The Roman attack initially succeeded, but unfortunately, the consul's brother Publius, who had been consul in 472 BC and was serving as a legatus under his brother's command, led his forces too far from the main Roman force and was tragically cut off and killed. This led the consul to pursue him, and he himself was wounded and narrowly rescued from the enemy. The Aequi once again besieged the Romans in their camp and even displayed the head of the consul's brother. However, Hope was not lost as the proconsul Quinctius arrived with Latin and Hernican forces, launching a fierce attack on the Aequian army. The besieged Roman army once again broke forth from the camp, and the Aequian army was decisively defeated. Postumius also achieved success against the Aequian forces in the Roman territory, and he was joined in the attack by the returning Roman armies of Quinctius and Furius. According to Livy, relying on Valerius Antias, the number of Romans dead in Hernican territory was 5,300, with 2,400 Aequi killed in the Roman territory and an additional 4,230 Aequians killed. With their heads held high, the Roman forces returned to Rome, bringing an end to the Justitium. The Latin and Hernican troops were gratefully returned, and a force of 1,000 from Antium, although arriving too late to provide assistance, were respectfully dismissed. As the war concluded, a number of portents were witnessed in Rome, prompting the declaration of a solemn festival of three days to appease the gods. In 390 BC, a Gaulish warband managed to defeat the Roman army at the Battle of Alea and unfortunately sacked Rome. It's interesting to note that ancient writers mention that in 389 BC, the Etruscans, the Volsci, and the Aequi all raised armies with the hope of taking advantage of this setback for Roman power. According to Livy and Plutarch, the Aequi gathered their army at Bole. However, the Roman dictator Marcus Furius Camillus had just dealt a severe blow to the Volsci. He surprised the Aequian army and managed to capture both their camp and the town. According to Diodorus Siculus, the Aequi were actually besieging Bole when they were attacked by Camillus. Livy, on the other hand, reports that a Roman army ravaged Aequian territory again in 88, this time without facing any resistance. Oakley, 1997, believes that these accounts of Roman victories against the Aequi in 389 and 388 are historical, especially considering the disappearance of the Aequi from the sources until 304. However, due to conflicting information in the sources, it is difficult to determine the exact nature of the fighting around Bole. Bole was a Latin town, but it also witnessed numerous clashes between Romans and Aequi, with control changing hands multiple times. Therefore, it is possible that either an unreported Equian capture followed by a Roman recapture or a failed Aequian siege occurred. Thank you for watching this fascinating insight into the Roman Aquian Wars. We hope you enjoyed delving into this pivotal conflict that shaped ancient history. Don't forget to comment below with your thoughts and any other historical topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Also, Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and subscribe to our channel for more captivating historical content. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos as we continue to explore the rich tapestry of ancient battles and the civilizations that fought them. Thank you for being part of our community and we'll see you in the next video.